Machine learning has made great advances, but doesn't have much in common with the way your brain works. For artificial intelligence to evolve into its next phase, artificial general intelligence, we must examine the capabilities and limitations of biological neurons and how these relate to machine learning. In the previous video, we looked at some of the abilities that neurons excel at. In this video, I'll explore a single facet of biological neurons which so far has kept them way ahead of their artificial counterparts, their incredible efficiency. Future AI. Technologies that think. Although machine learning can do many things which the human brain cannot, the brain performs continuous speech recognition, visual interpretation, and a host of other things simultaneously, all while using only about 12 watts of energy. For comparison, my laptop draws 65 watts, and my desktop machine draws over 200, and neither of them is capable of running the huge machine learning networks which are in use today. The human brain is proof positive that general intelligence can exist in a system which is small and dissipates only 12 watts of energy. While machine learning has taken off into the realm of the largest, most power-hungry computers in the world, let's look at how the brain achieves its remarkable efficiency. I attribute it to three factors. First, the brain is physical and chemical rather than electronic. Second, the neurons in the brain are really slow. And third, neurons only require significant energy when they emit spikes. While we can use electronic instruments to measure voltages within neurons, their fundamental operation is chemical. Ions are migrating from one side of a membrane to another and ionic molecules are changing orientation. This is fundamentally different from a computer where electrons are moved about and the charge they represent travels at nearly the speed of light. Obviously, molecules in the brain don't require any external energy at all when they are just sitting there. And the amount of energy needed to get a sodium ion to move from one side of a membrane to another is minute. I mentioned in a previous video in this series that neurons spike at a maximum frequency of about 250 hertz, and neural signals travel along axons at a leisurely two meters per second. If we slowed our CPUs down to a similar pace, they would also dissipate a lot less energy, but likely not as little as their biological counterparts. But the real difference is that neurons need substantial energy only when they fire. Further, they don't fire very often. By taking the total energy of the brain and dividing by the energy needed to fire a neuron, as calculated by its chemistry, we conclude that neocortex neurons fire on average only once every two seconds. It's obvious that the continuous processes like vision and hearing must be running more or less constantly, using more energy, so to get things to average out, Neurons in vast portions of the brain seldom fire at all. A neuron which represents a specific memory, such as a person you know, for example, likely only fires when you think of that person. Further, for most neural circuitry to work, many neurons must fire in bursts of five or more spikes, further reducing the number of neurons which are active at any given time. The idea that neurons are only active when the information they represent is active is fundamentally at odds with machine learning. Consider neurons representing a gray level at a single pixel, as I showed in the last video. In machine learning, a single neuron fires continuously with its firing rate defining the light intensity. A more efficient and more likely alternative is that seven different neurons each represent a distinct gray intensity. Only one of them will fire a brief burst whenever a new gray level is encountered. This requires more neurons, but a lot less energy. But there's a further way to think about it. A CPU uses some amount of energy when it's running at speed, that is, not idle or asleep, and it uses this amount of energy largely regardless of the data it is processing. In a CPU, adding zero plus zero requires essentially the same energy as adding 12,345 to 67,890. Neurons are different. A neuron representing zero doesn't fire. 
and dissipates essentially no energy. This distinction has been the genesis of the neuromorphic computer field. In the brain simulator, processing is only required for neurons which fire, and so a desktop CPU can handle up to 2.5 billion synapses per second. Neuromorphic chips capitalize on this effect to produce AI results with radically less power than conventional machine learning processes. While neuromorphic systems have moved in the direction of more brain-like architecture, they are typically still using the machine learning backpropagation algorithm, which is not neuromorphic at all. Before closing the conversation on the efficiency of the brain, I'd like to point out one similarity which leads me to believe that brain-level computing is not nearly as far off as most people think. Our neocortex is folded into our heads in the well-known brain shape, but actually the neuron cell bodies are in just a few layers on the surface. And if the surface were unfolded, it would loosely represent a disc about 12 inches in diameter. The neurons and synapses on the surface represent the gray matter, while the interior of the brain represents the massive axonal interconnections, the white matter. Right now, many integrated circuits are created on silicon wafers, which, by coincidence, are also about 12 inches in diameter. With today's transistor densities, one of these wafers might theoretically contain over 3 trillion transistors. Your neocortex conceivably contains 160 trillion synapses, but these occur in several layers at the brain surface. Today's transistors are substantially smaller than either neurons or synapses, and the process of fabricating multiple layers of components on the surface of a wafer is beginning to gather steam. But these transistors are perhaps a billion times faster than biological synapses, so today's wafer of transistors represents millions of times the computing power of the neocortex. While the very real problems of heat dissipation and interconnection are yet to be solved, the idea that an AGI must be in a massive supercomputer is only a first step. To build a computer with brain-level computational power in a desktop or mobile device is well within the foreseeable future. In the final video in this series, I'll summarize the many reasons why machine learning isn't like your brain, along with a few similarities. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to be notified when more videos in this series are available. And for now, watch this interesting video.